Ideas for Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. With me today is Silver Quill. Hello, ponies, my old friend. I've got to talk about you again. Yep, yep. Been a while, man. Been a while. Because an episode softly creeping, it aired while I was sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> you want to carry That's on? That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho. So, how are you doing, man? I'm um, well. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, man. Season 9 has hit us like a truck, and it was awesome. You kind of contain the awesomeness that is Sombra. I'm absolutely flawless. <laughs> oh my god, he's so flamboyant. <laughs> yes, I'm the most powerful in all the world. <laughs> I, I guess we'll hold our thoughts on that soonish. So we got still we still got season eight to deal with, and we're on a very good episode to start off. Oh, we're on what may be the best episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And one of the greatest songs for season eight, probably. Mm-hmm. Yes. But anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 23, Sounds of Silence. In this episode, Fluttershy and Applejack journey to the edge of the map on a friendship quest to help groups of ponies called Kirins who are so afraid of hurting each other's feelings that they've taken a vow of silence. So, Silver, what do you think of said episode? Oh, I just love it. It's a magnificent episode all around. One, it features my two favorite ponies. And here's the funny thing. Once upon a time, I thought they couldn't work well together. Basically, that Applejack was too stubborn and Fluttershy too submissive uh, for them to really play it off. But Fluttershy has grown. Applejack's learned to ease off. And as a result, they have this great dynamic that enhances the story. But the scene stealer is Autumn Blaze. (laughs) Yeah. But by the way, I, I gotta ask, when was the last time that they worked together on a friendship quest? I forgot. Viva Los Pegasus. That's the first? On a friendship mission, yes. Oh. Viva! Viva! Oh. Viva! Alrighty then. Yeah, Autumn Blaze was awesome. She she was the, how do you put this, limelight, uh, show stealer and whatnot. Well, it'd be a bad thing if we were introduced to Kieran and didn't give two flips about him. Oh yeah, true that. But the others were quite memorable, too. But none more so than Autumn Blaze. True that, true that. So, anywho, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I, I love the lore for this universe. Like, they introduce new creatures. And the Kirin... The Kirins are an, a very Asian thing, if I were to say. If I do understand right, what Kirins are... They're a crossbreed between a horse and a dragon. Wrap your mind around that for a bit. And this one here, they're their own thing. Yes. I've heard it said that Kieran, in human context, someone saw a giraffe and was just trying to make sense of it all. Ah. Because they'd never seen such a thing before. Uh, I can understand that. Oh, by the way, uh, another Kieran in media was in them fighting herds. The Kirin character who has this, who replaced Rainbow Dash. Yeah, I, I forgot what her name. What was it? Blaze, something like that. Forgot. Blaze was the dragon. Yeah, uh, for them fighting hurts. Remember? Yes. Let's see here. Them's fi- hey hey. Let's go kick ass. Them's fighting hurts. Yeah. So there's another Kirin in media that kind of is close to home. So, anywho, while you look for that one, Silver, I shall give the audience at home some spoiler warnings. So, if you have not watched this episode yet, what are you doing? (laughs) Season 9 is upon us. So, anywho, pause here for a bit and go watch the episode. Welcome back. So, Silver, did you got it? Well, it doesn't appear that there is a Kieran in this. Huh, there is. You should. I remember. I played the game. Well, there's Arizona, the Buffalo, the... Cow. Bull. Well, cow. Yeah. Cow. Velvet the reindeer. Blender the unicorn. I, I. Paprika the alpaca. Uh-huh. Palm the sheep. And it's funny, I thought her name was Blaze, but according to this wiki, it's Tianho. Oh, um, Tianho. Tian, some, 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 something called Chinese. Tianho, something like that. But, uh, oh, wait. Yes, she is a Kieran. She looks like a dragon. Yeah. Okay. Hi about the cloud. Blah, blah, blah. The Empire subjects are Longmas. A very proud race of half horse, half dragon, which which uh, matches the Kirin, but for some reason they call them Longmas. Hmm. 
more research to be done then. Well, anywho, um, let's head into episode reviews. So we start off the episode with our heroes being dragged into the castle of friendship. Saying Princess Twilight says that, hey, um, look, map's glowing. You have to go here. And it's a friendship mission. Remember that? That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you have to be sent off to somewhere far, really, really far, like scary far. And Applejack and Fetishai says, where is this? And Twilight just says, oh, uh, this place is called um, Point of... Uh, the, the peak of perils, something like that. Peak of perils, yes. Which is who names these things? There's the question. Oh, hey, why do you like that? Oh, I'll call that the peak of perils. Why? Because it sounds cool. Yeah. The tourism board disagrees. <laughs> yep, but it's more than one peak. It's the peaks of peril. Oh, yeah, true that. And Applejack says, "Oh, come on, it's just naming conventions. You don't really need to worry about it, Sugar Cube." And Felty Shy says, "You sure?" We got Cloudsdale, which is up in the clouds. The Crystal Empire is made full of crystals. And do I need to say more? Well, okay. What about Froggy Bottom Bog? Are there all frogs along the bottom of the bog? Who knows? Nobody really checks it out because there's a Hydra there. Well, they should. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, Twilight just mentions that oh, um, we're not sure if it's fully dangerous, but Rockhoof told me that they used to live a peaceful race called the Kirin. Uh, they were really nice. They sang well and stuff. But also living there with them is the Nikir, a fire-breathing uh, creature that destroys all within front of them. Yes. Very, very dangerous. So you better watch out. Yes. You better watch out. You better not cry. If you see an Eric, you're going to die. <laughs> wow. So, anywho, our heroes um, go to the last stop on the Friendship Express to um, Perilous Peak, or Peaks of Peril, yes, and start their adventure. Until they met with this kooky old pony, who I'm guessing is being punished for something, yes. Actually, he probably clocked in and then the system just forgot him, <laughs> just left him out here for for his mind to rot. Oh, like the... Uh, you, you remember that one show with the red stapler guy? I forgot the show what it's called. Office Space? Yeah! Remember him? <laughs> I, I went red stapler. I, I went... That's the Lestra. Honestly, this reminds me more of a, a joke from The Simpsons. Oh, which one? Uh, it's, from, it's from the episode of Bart Soul. Street cleaner swipes up Bart's uh, ba- bike, spits out a perfectly clean one, <laughs> just as Bart is about to climb on, it falls to pieces. Oh, okay. And the street sweeper driver is looking out the back going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he falls down the subway entrance. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. Oh. But anywho, we continue on, and uh, Applejack's on an adventure, traveling through mud and cavernous caverns and just stuff, you know, like adventurous stuff. And while she's doing all this, uh, she's telling Fluttershy to look out and be wary of stuff. And when she looks back, Fluttershy's not there. It seems that Fluttershy's helping some varmints collect some flowers. That'll go over well. Yep, yep. And they start to argue a bit and Applejack's being um, bullheaded or stubborn in this case. Well, what's another word for stubborn, man? Obstinate? Obstinate. Ah, bullhead is one thing, but eh, I, I forgot. But anyway, um, stubborn is one word. So Fluttershy just screams Applejack's name and angrily tells her, can you please listen to me? And I have to say, Fluttershy has, imp- I won't say improved, but I- she has developed more. Um, she knows where to draw the line. <laughs> I think she's improved. I would call that a very grand improvement. And Applejack's learned to listen. Yeah, true, 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 true. And yeah, that that snark face from Fluttershy is just priceless. (laughs) Uh, But anywho, uh, what Fluttershy's trying to say that she's been talking with the squirrels and the squirrel says they know a shortcut to the Kirin's village 
And yeah, she moves a boulder and they went through the shortcut. And I have to say, Fluttershy is strong. Like, that is a huge rock. What if it's like one of those really uh, hollow rocks? There's a lot of size, but not a lot of mass. Do they even exist anymore? Who knows? Fluttershy is technically the most powerful pony outside of the princesses. Since she has all the animal kingdom at her beck and call. Oh yeah, true that. Oh man, remember that issue fifty something? Oh yes, where where she sicked a, an army of animals on Ponyville. Yeah, that was just scary, man. <laughs> Never mess with the quiet ones; they're scary. Exactly. But anywho, talking about the quiet ones, we're introduced to the Kirins. <laughs> nice segue, me. <laughs> well done. <laughs> no, I get a gold star. <laughs> So, anywho, um, our heroes meet the Kirins and introduce themselves. And I was hoping that they use this line, but it was close. And that line is, Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oh, that's from a bygone era. You couldn't say that now without getting labeled a racist. <laughs> but they almost did it here. They almost did, but new. No. Now, if I remember right, Fluttershy determines pretty quickly... That they have to do yes or no questions. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems that way. And Applejack seems to be slow on the uptake. And Fluttershy is pretty fast. And so now they have to discuss or set a plan in motion to help the Kirins. And it seems that the Kirins are the one that needs the help with a friendship problem. Yes. So our heroes just look around the village and see what's going on. And in uh, first, at first glance, there's nothing really wrong. And Applejack tries to coax them into talking, and it seems to fail. And, yeah, they, they can't really, sorry, they don't get anything out of the Kirins. And then Applejack just asks, do any of you Kirin talk? And they point to a dark and creepy road, which Fluttershy is afraid of. And, yay, uh... Our heroes made up a plan where they split up and try to find some clues to what's going on. You don't split the party. Never split the party. Yeah, man. The GM's going to hate you for that. You're all going to die. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Fluttershy is in the village trying to find out some answers to their problem while Applejack goes to find some creature who can talk or Kirin that can talk and she walks into the forest and stumbles upon Autumn Blaze and Autumn Blaze is a chatty Kirin a very very chatty Kirin <laughs> so they introduce each other and Autumn here brings Applejack to her home which is near the cliffside and shows her the horizon and is beautiful. And yeah, Autumn here has a lot to say. A lot to say. I mean, poor dear, she is uh, just a little bit kooky. You would be too if you haven't talked to anyone in a very, very long time. What do you mean? I am kooky on my own. <laughs> I talk to lots of people. And I'd probably drive them bonkers. <laughs> Where's Safi? I need to quote a bonnet at her. <laughs> uh, she's taking five. Something to do with uh, BabsCon or something like that? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, BabsCon. But anywho, Applejack um, wants to know why the other Kirins don't speak. And Autumn Blaze here says that uh, the other Kirins uh, kind of took a vow of silence because whenever we get angry, we become this... Oh, no, she doesn't say that yet. Uh, she just says the vow of silence and Applejack wants to know what's it about and the whole quote here is just priceless because she's Applejack says this oh I understand if you don't want to talk about it and yeah Autumn, Bla Autumn Blaze here just says yeah I, I don't really want to talk about it I want to sing <laughs> and Applejack just has this look in her eyes like no oh no 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 <laughs> oh no yep so song is awesome I, I remember <laughs> I remember watching this seen specifically at well not me specifically i just saw it on the youtubes but it was on a 
panel, um, I forgot where, I think it could be Comic-Con, where Megan was introducing this song to the audience. And it's like, oh my goodness, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I saw the same thing and I just uh, fell for, I fell for the song right away. And you know, it's funny, uh, years prior, were Apples to the Core. Mm-hmm. That too was an animatic played at like a Comic-Con like panel. There's something about Applejack that just gets people, is great for teaser material. I guess so, yeah. She gets in on all the good songs. Yeah, but um, he, here's, ah, oh, man, I, we did this conversation a few weeks back about uh, which song for season eight you like. And I'm I'm tied with this one and um, Road to Friendship. Those, those two are my favorite for this season. I'd go with this one just because I I like the humor a bit more here. There's good humor in Road to Friendship, but come on. There's only so many there's there's only so long that Sudoku can keep you entertained. <laughs> How do, And plus the refrain about rainbows won't light up the sky unless you let it rain. Oh, <laughs> oh so good. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm guessing for me it's more personal because I like the song style for uh, what you call this Road to Friendship. But it sounds so similar. So I'm I'm 50-50 on this one. But you know what? Let's carry on. Uh, song's awesome. It's kind of a uh, montage for their history, yes. And it's fantastic. Yep, yep. Oh, man. <laughs> Including the Phantom of the Opera thing. <laughs> That's out of left field. I mean, who doesn't love musical theater? <laughs> you know, right? So, anywho, once the song's finished, Applejack understands why the Kirin don't speak. And she finds a plan to make the other Kirins accept Autumn back to their herd. And once she's there, she stumbles upon Fluttershy, and Fluttershy shows the reason why the Kirin don't talk. And is it just a summarization from Fluttershy's point of view? When the Kirin get angry, they become uh, Nikirs, and they burn the whole forest down. So, yeah. Which is a pretty bold departure from the classic Kirin. Yeah, true. By the way, Silver... I want you to read the Nikir backwards. Well, oh, I I get the joke. <laughs> it, it helps that I'm looking at the Sounds of Silence gallery on the NLP wiki, yeah. and <laughs> the title is the Kieran and the Nirik. <laughs> I just, I'm surprised Twilight and Rockhoof didn't spot that one. Oh, yeah, it's a, understandable, but you're like, hey, <laughs> but I like the twist they've added to the Kieran and the Nirik. Uh, in classic mythology, if a Kirin appears in your home, you are severely blessed. I mean, you you make a spot on the sofa for that Kirin right there and right now. But if you harm nature in any way, that's when the Kirin gets ticked off and attacks. So it's kind of weird now that they become the destroyers of nature. I, I can't say much because this is one of those things where our real, uh, our human analogy of them is different from the ponies and they took some liberty with this one. Oh yeah it's good when they take liberty I mean <laughs> come on hippogriffs do I need to say more hippogriffs oh yeah they turn to, they turn to sea ponies what the hey <laughs> yeah when are you gonna do that silver <laughs> I have this image of me transforming into this tentacled beast with a long beak oh no only to find out that I'm only about a foot tall <laughs> ah son of a gun <laughs> uh, but anywho Fluttershy and Applejack argue about how they should approach the matter. Fluttershy wants to keep the Kirins quiet while Applejack wants them to talk again. And the reason is that the, um, what was it thing called? The Stream of Silence, was it? I believe so, yes. Right. So anywho, the Stream of Silence, it not only makes you uh, quiet, but it removes all sense of emotion out of you. So basically, you're just a walking husk of a person, or a pony in this matter. Oh, God, you're you're from the movie Equilibrium, which is everyone has no emotion, and there's this really terrifying child that I just expected to melt back into the wall, and it scared me so. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. But it had the gun cut. <laughs> oh, wow. Did it start it there? That's where it came from, the... Gun kata, a martial art involving guns. Okay. Sure. 
Sure, why not? Yeah. So, anywho, upon realization where Fluttershy is going to be taken, she scared, but suddenly a Nikir comes to the rescue and puts a ring of fire around him. I fell into a burning ring of fire. This is a very musical episode for me. Yeah. Down, down, down. <laughs> uh, Johnny Cash, everyone. So, anywho, the Nikir transformed back into Autumn Blaze, a Kirin, yay! And Father Shai is shocked that she talks. And <laughs> Applejack just says, You have no idea. <laughs> Magneto's off to the side. That's my pony. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, they explain the situation and it seems that Alton Brace here can control her anger and stuff and wants to help the other Kirins. And it seems the other Kirins wants to get cured from their uh, vow of silence. But only after they witness Fluttershy and Applejack laugh off their argument. Oh, true that. Which is a pretty fun, uh, a fun way to conclude this. I mean... Basically, their arguments ended with fire and, and destruction, and the ponies just laugh it off. True, true, because in the end, it doesn't really matter. It's not like your argue. <laughs> Most arguments are dumb. That's the point. And that is why we make a game about it. It's called a debate. <laughs> I will say it's a bit more of a... It's a weaker part of the episode where the two just start lecturing one another. Or no, they start lecturing the Kieran, rather. It's talking down or talking at the the beans you're trying to change, whereas it it was a lot better when they were just laughing it off, mm. and the Kieran just see this like, wait, you can do that, yeah. But still, it's a foreign concept to someone who never really understand or never really thought about it. So you have to give it that. And I can, but it's more the talking down to the Kieran. I feel like uh, Applejack and Fluttershy could instead recount. All the multitude of times they've argued with their friends. Especially Rainbow Dash and Rarity. Oh, true that. Because that happens a lot. Oh, Applejack with Rainbow Dash. They compete a lot. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Start arguments. Oh, yeah. And they could just say, you know, we, we've argued so much, and yet we're friends. I mean, just because you have an argument, we're, we're still friends at the end of the day. True, true. And I think that would be more powerful than just a lecture. That is true. That is true. And also, getting back on track. Uh, we have the Dark Red Kirin. What's her name? Uh, Fern Fernflare. Uh, let's see here. So, Thanks, Fernflare. Actually, I can't rem I can't quite recall. It's all I don't see it in the transcript right yeah, away. But anywho, uh, what, if you want to try looking for Flare, but yeah, so I'll just continue on. Um, Fernflare here says, um, well, not really says, but kind of um, charades what she wants. And Autumn here goes through all of the generic dialogue. Oh, uh, is the little Timmy chap in a well? Um, is it the baby? Uh, baby fish? What do you want? And she gets frustrated. <laughs> and takes a moment to release her rage behind a wall or behind a boulder. And comes back. And yes, uh, Fern Flash says, Oh, emotes, I won't say emote, what was the word? Um, charade that she wants the cure. And so does everyone. And Autumn Blaze here says, oh, um, you want the cure? Um, That's going to be a problem because the flower for the cure is no longer blooming. I, I tried finding it all over the island and I, I couldn't find it. But, you know, maybe this this one spot that I haven't checked. So, Let's look for it. Yay. So, Applejack and Fluttershy are just wondering, like, how does this flower look like? And what, Fool's Breath was it? Yep, Fool's Breath. So, how does even Fool's Breath look like? So, suddenly a squirrel pops up and talks to Applejack. And Fluttershy comes along and translates to Applejack and us what's going on. And it seems that the flower that Fluttershy was helping the squirrel pick up from earlier is the flower, uh, Fool's Breath. Talk about uh, Chekhov's gun. Well, there you go. Convenience. Yay. With Fluttershy being uh, off screen for a good chunk of the, what I call the episode's core, mm -hmm. this is a good uh, reason for her to be there. 
once again, you're just like, why, why does the tree send two ponies? Well, you, wh- sometimes one dominates the episode, but the other has a ch- has a moment to shine. I think Applejack got the greater screen time this time around. Oh, that is true. That is true. And at the same time, too, uh, this scenario really works well with Applejack. You know, I'm going to hold this for the end because we're almost near it. So, anywho, and the ponies rush to the Kirin village and give the flower to Autumn, which she creates a cure for the uh, the Kirins. And now every Kirin can sing and dance and talk and whatever. And with that, episode ends. Yay. Huzzah! <clears throat> so, um, like I was mentioning about something before we headed to the end, and now we're here, is what would you think would happen if the rules were reversed? Applejack might have gotten chucked into this silent stream herself because she would get very, very impatient with these darn uh, Kirin <laughs> who do not talk. <laughs> and Fluttershy would probably run screaming away from Autumn Blaze because she comes on pretty strong. So I'd say both characters are right where they need to be. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, too, like Fluttershy has Discord around, so Autumn Blaze won't be that bad, right? Oh, but Discord, he resists being the uh, the magic fix. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we need to talk about Season 9 soonish. Yes, indeed. But uh, there is one thing about Applejack in this episode, and this is a legitimate question, but I also think it has a legitimate answer. Applejack lives with Big Macintosh. Oh, yeah. If anyone is should be used to yes or no uh, questions and answers, it's she. However, she's also known Big Macintosh for most of her life. She has a very close relationship with him. If someone brings up that argument, I would I would counter that she doesn't know the Kieran. She doesn't have that level of familiarity, and so it is. There's going to be the same process. It's not uh, a simple case of well, I know how to commu- communicate with one yes or no pony, therefore I can communicate with everyone. No, it's still a very personal. Uh, interaction and you could always apply that with mod because mod seems to be a kind of yes or no pony like she's more direct with her answers so to me that's similar to yes and no you can ask her questions and she'll give you a answer but never really um, expand on her answer so basically you'll just get yes and no which can get annoying too and Applejack really struggled with Maud, which was a fun episode, too. I also got to give props to this episode for, uh, well, for allowing silence. It's actually quite difficult in a TV show, especially in the kids, to allow a moment of silence. I remember so many uh, Japanese du- uh, dubs. Uh, they would never allow a moment for the characters to breathe. Yeah, but those are the moments where you get to reflect on because um, shows like Kenshin really relies on that. Or Samurai Jack. The very first episode I watched was Jack versus the Archers. Oh, yeah, that was cool. And that episode, was I think there were less than 10 lines in the whole episode. Oh, yeah, but the use of negative space was awesome, too. And silence and natural sounds. And that's what you get a lot with uh, when Applejack is talking with Autumn Blaze. To so many... Uh, network executives and the like silence equals death and you don't want kids to feel like they're dying but it is it's one of those things where i could argue but i don't work in media so what do i know kind of deal well we know that silence is not death but it can cause tension true and funny enough that's what this episode relies on the tension of silence is what drives applejack bad <laughs> yep and unlike honest apple Here, we're sharing with her uh, awkwardness, with her frustration. And so she's empathetic and and also a proxy for the audience. Yeah, true that, true that. And also, if we were to be in Fluttershy's uh, POV, we would see that she would kind of mingle well. Because uh, when she's left with the Kirins, uh, she has that awkward moment where (laughs) the Kirins are just watching her staring at her unblinking <laughs> that that's, that moment's just funny in my head 
and just wondering like oh my goodness am i gonna get killed oh no honestly i see them looking at her and thinking i really like her mane <laughs> yeah those unthinking eyes uh, but still it's one of those what if scenarios and like you mentioned before either or it still works what you mentioned before it works better and well with applejack so yeah let's roll with it but we have been long and let's hit into final thoughts what do you think Oman? It is one of the best of Season 8, if not the best. Might even be in the top 5 of MLP. But uh, I guess the only complaint I have is I want to see more of the Kieran. And I don't think we'll get that chance because there's not a lot of reason to come back. Well, there's always one reason for them to come to Ponyville. To light it on fire? Probably, I don't know. And here's the thing, man, like... You want the Kirins to come, I do feel the same way. I want Gilda to come back, and that's been a while, man. Well, she lives on through Gallus' attitude. Uh, not the same. But anywho. I thought you'd be cooler. But anywho. Any, anything more, man? Just that I love this episode, I would gladly welcome their return. I, I, and as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I, I recently rewatched it. And the song was awesome. The interaction between the characters were good. And like you mentioned before, the moments of silence made this episode. Like um, just staring at the rainbow before talking. Like that was breathtaking. And hearing Autumn Blaze talk. And here's the thing. um, She talks a mile a minute, almost like Pinkie Pie. But the only difference is here that you don't mind Autumn talking because she, we we know that she hasn't talked in a long while. And we kind of tolerate it. With Pinkie Pie, uh, in the hands of a bad writer, she can go crazy. Uh, and drive others crazy. Indeed. But anywho, uh, that's it. That's my opinion. So, Silver, what are we going to do for next week? Well, we're going to keep this Season 8 train a rolling because we're nearing the end, but that means next up we got to talk Father Knows Beast. Uh, Ooh, I sense, I sense anger. Uh, Feed me your rage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like you, like, you mentioned this is your favorite or top five. That one there, that that hurts me in... Yeah, let's go to that review soon. Alrighty. Well, until then... Like Silver said, we're going to review that episode with the Bad Dad. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be next week's thing. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nimbyshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me also on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under MLP-Silver-Quill. If you do a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, my channel shall pop up, and I will have new reviews for everyone to enjoy. And you can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday with either a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Check those out because those are a lot of fun to uh, read because what right now Silver is doing the whole Finship is Magic and you're on issue two, right? Just wrapped up issue two. Now it's time for issues three and four, which are a their unique read. Issue three can be dumped in the trash because it's non-canon anymore. <laughs> it can, but you still got to treat a story as a story in my eyes. True that. Doesn't matter if it's canon or not. Did they do a good job? Oh, no. See... <laughs> You, my interpretation of issue 3 can be taken in two ways. It's not canon anymore and you don't need to read it. It's not a good story and you don't need to read it. <laughs> but that's just me. But anywho, yeah. Shout out to Tristan who messaged in that thing there. Talking about where do baby crystal comes or something like that. Oh, yeah, it's talking about the issue number one, Sombra, who was burst, birthed from a crystal. <laughs> How? <laughs> Way back when, man. May way back when. Uh, memories. Memories. <laughs> so anyway, and also please subscribe to videos on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVilleLive.com. Links are in the show notes. 
If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted contents. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Requiel. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Be wary, wary, quiet. I'm hunting syringe. Well, that you're an enemy of nature and you have to be killed. Oh no! Oh, my skin!